In this question, we're going to have a look at a question one, a titra titration question, and it's looking at a water titration. So there's two water titrations, one which looks at water hardness, which is the one that we're going to have a look at. There's also water titration on dissolved oxygen content, which um, came up recently as well. But this one is from 2018 and um, it is question one. So we're gonna go through the question. Uh, quite a lot of theory here. Um, a, B, C, and D, and F are all theory. It's just the part E that's the calculation, 15 marks going for it. So you'll see that. Um, they tell us that the total hardness in the water supply was estimated by titrating 50 centimeters cubed samples of the water with a standard solution of EDTA. And they've given you the name ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Sometimes they have asked for the name of that in previous questions, but not in 2018. The ions that cause the hardness, represented by M2+, which are here, and the EDTA ions, represented by the H2Y2-, this one, they're the EDTA ions, react according to the following balanced equation. So this is your water, this is your EDTA, and they're reacting with each other and you get H plus ions and you get this complex. Um, so I suppose the main thing that you need to take from this is that they're reacting in a one is to one ratio. There's no number in front, so we just have a, an invisible one in front, which um, is the ratio in which they react. And that's what we can get from this balanced equation. They say the average volume of a 0 0.010 molar EDTA solution required to react with 50 centimeters cubed of the water was 9.3 centimeters cubed. So there are some of the figures that we're going to be using for part E in the calculation. But I'll just talk you through the other parts of the question first. Um, so part A says identify a compound of calcium that's one of the main causes of permanent hardness in water. So if we're talking about, you know, there's temporary hardness and there's permanent hardness. For the temporary hardness, we're looking at things like the carbonates. We're talking about calcium carbonate and we're talking about magnesium carbonate. Because remember, you can boil it and the carbonate turns into carbon dioxide and uh, it gets removed, essentially. Um, but it's a sulfate that causes the permanent hardness. So to answer that question... For part A, the answer is calcium, because they asked us for a calcium, calcium sulfate. And that is the answer that they're looking for there in part A of question one from 2018. Uh, moving on then to have a look at part B. Just three marks going for part A. And describe the procedure used to measure out 50 centimeters cubed of the hard water from a beaker into a conical flask. And there's 12 marks going for it. Describe the procedure to measure 50 centimeters cubed of the water from a beaker into a conical flask. This is basically how to use a pipette. Um, so if we're answering the question, there's 12 marks going for it. So I would be saying, that you're going to be looking for four different points. There's three marks for every correct answer in chemistry. So you're looking for four different points. You can number them if you like, um, but there's no need. Um, how to use a pipette? Well, even just mentioning pipette and a pipette filler will get you three marks for sure. Mentioning a pipette and a pipette filler. Um, the other things that are key to using a pipette are how do you rinse it? Now, you're going to rinse with deionized water first and then with what it's going to contain. Now, you can't be sure whether each of those are going to be separate points. Rinse with deionized water and then... rinse with what it's going to contain in this case with hard water so that's uh, another valid point for three marks um in how to use a pipette um the pipette filler will help you suck up the liquid then 
I suppose uh, worth mentioning that the bottom of the meniscus, make sure that the bottom of the meniscus is on top of the line. Okay, that would probably be a useful point to note. And I'd also mention, um, you know, there's so many things that you could mention. You could say, um, you could say, bring the graduation mark to eye level to read I'd be saying something like drain under gravity that means don't blow out the last drop And I'd be saying as well to repeat because most of the pipettes that we come across are 25 centimeters cubed pipettes and you're trying to pipette out um, 50 centimeters cubed. Repeat the procedure because uh, if you've got a 25 centimeter cube Pipette, you're going to have to do it twice to, to get your 50 centimeters cubed. So we've got six about six different points. It depends um, on the marking scheme from year to year, but they're looking for four points there, four threes. So give them enough anyway. Um, part C then uh, says name the indicator added to the conical flask. And we know that the indicator in this case is aerochrome black T. So that is the answer to the indicator question. Part That's part one. Part two is what is the color beforehand. Part three is what is it at the end. It is wine red at the beginning. And it goes to blue at the end. So that covers us for part C. On to part D then. Part D, a small volume of another solution was added. A small volume of another solution was added to the water samples before commencing the titrations. Identify the solution and why was it why was this solution added for six marks? So in this case the answer is buffer 10. And why is a buffer ever added to um, the to the uh, to a solution well it's to keep the pH constant you could say to keep the pH at pH 10 where the indicator works best And now we're on to part E, which is a calculation. So quite a lot of um, quite a lot of theory there in this year's twenty eighteen um, question. Um, so it says calculate the average number of moles of EDTA used in the titrations, the total number of moles of M two ion in the fifty centimeters cube of fired water, the total hardness of water expressed in grams per liter of calcium carbonate. And the total hardness of water expressed in ppm of calcium carbonate. So there's 15 marks going for this part of the question. Now how I usually do these is I write down the two guys that we have H2, Y2 minus. And because these don't exactly say water and EDTA, but we can deduce that from the question. EDTA is this guy here. Why not write it in above it? And this is our water or hard water. 
but that's just a reminder to yourself. And then we're going to create a table. So the table is going to have molarity, volume. We're going to have the actual number of moles. And we're going to have the ratio. And we're going to do this for the two EDTA and the water. And if we look at the question, they've told us that we're using a solution of EDTA that is 0 0.010 moles per liter. Uh, they've also told us that the average volume is 9.3. So 9.3 centimeters cubed is how much of the EDTA is used. And we use 50 centimeters cubed of the water. So there are the numbers that have been given to us there in the question. The um, other thing that we have from the balanced equation is the ratio, and uh, it's a one is to one ratio. So all that we need to do now is we need to do the calculation. So um, if this if the molarity of the EDTA is 0 0.010 moles per litre, and we don't have a full litre, we've only got 9.3 centimetres cubed, what we're going to do is we're going to say 0 0.010, divide that by 1,000, and multiply by 9.3. The answer that we get is going to be 9.3 by 10 to the minus, and let's just do this on the calculator, 0 0.010 divided by 1,000, Multiply by 9.3, we're going to get 9.3 by 10 to the minus 5. That's a minus. Okay, we've one is to one ratio, so the number of moles here is going to be the number of moles here. 9.3 by 10 to the minus 5. And because this is the number, the actual number of moles that we have in 50 centimeters cubed, if we want to get it into molarity, which is moles per liter, we're going to divide it by 50 and multiply by 1,000 because this is 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter. 9.3 by 10 to the minus 5 divided by 50, multiply by 1,000. So again, doing this on my calculator, 9.3 exponent minus 5 divided by 50, multiply by 1,000, and we get 0. 0, 0, 0.0186 moles per liter. Now, I'm going to tidy that up a little bit and look at the questions that they've asked. The, the first question that they ask here is uh, the average number of moles of EDTA used. Then we've found that out here, the average actual number of moles here. So the answer for that, E part 1, is 9.3 by 10 to the minus 5. Looking at the next question, um, is the number of moles of M2 plus ions, so centimeters cubed, in 50 centimeters cubed of the hard water, well, the number of moles of that is the same because it's a one is to one ratio, so the answer for part two is also 9.3 by 10 to the minus five. Um, moving on to part three. So part three says, uh, the total hardness of water expressed in grams per liter of CaCO3. Right, well, a lot of the time you'll see this um, in the hard water that they express it in terms of uh, grams per litre of CaCO3. And how do you go from moles per litre to grams per litre? You multiply by MR. So you're just going to take the molarity, which is here, and you're just going to multiply it by the MR. So you take 0 0.00186, you multiply it by the MR of calcium carbonate, which really handily works out to be 100. So when you do this, you get 0 0.186 grams per litre of calcium carbonate. So that's the MR of calcium carbonate. Okay, so that is the answer there for part 
3 and then the last part of the calculation part 4 says calculate or yeah calculate the total hardness of water expressed in ppm of calcium carbonate so once you have once you have your moles per liter or your grams per liter there all you need to do is you need to multiply your grams per liter by 1000 because there's a thousand milligrams in a gram and that will give us 186 important to remember that ppm is the same thing as milligrams per liter and that's the answer for part four the last question is part f the question says suggest a way to determine if this water supply contained temporary hardness for five marks well temporary hardness you will remember is caused by calcium carbonate CaCO3 and how do we get rid of calcium carbonate well we boil it okay that would be how to get rid of it but this question asks us how to determine if it did contain temporary hardness so boiling it won't will get rid of it but it's not going to determine whether it contained it or not um and if you titrate it again so boil it and titrate again and see if um, the ppm of the hard water decreased and that completes question one from 2018 on hard water and edta